They also have the convergent boundaries. Now, convergent boundaries will happen whenever two plates collide against each other. And you see two of these events happening here. You see a subducting oceanic plate going underneath a continental plate, and you also see a subducting oceanic plate going underneath another oceanic plate. Now, all convergent boundaries will have some things in common. All of them will cause earthquakes. And basically this will happen because the two plates are sliding past each other and there's going to be a lot of friction between the plates. And sometimes, because of that friction, uh, the rocks will get caught against each other and then they can't really move. And so, when they cut against each other and they can't really move, they cause the, the rock to deform because, remember, these plates continue to move and subduct regardless of whether or not the rocks allow them to move. And so, what this does is it deforms the plate. And you can see that happening because the volcano mountains are forming here, right? The, the plate is literally buckling and it's performing. And ever so often, what's going to happen is that this rock will crack under the pressure of being deformed. And as it cracks, it, it, it returns to normal size in a split second and releases all the energy of the thousands of years that it was under pressure of being deformed. And that is what releases the shock wave that becomes the earthquake. So you're going to get earthquakes as one of the things you're going to have in these features. Another thing that shows up in all of these um, is, is volcanism. Because as the one plate of the six sinks underneath the other, it hits the asthenosphere in the mantle and it starts to melt. And as it melts, it rises to the surface, melting the crust that's above it because it's going to be much hotter than it. So it actually melts the crust in its path, which create magma chambers underneath the continental crust uh, that is or the crust that's sitting on top. Another feature that's very normal, it's going to be a trench or a subduction zone because you're always going to have one plate that's going to be in, going underneath the other. Another one that's going to be the rocks are going to crack under the pressure that we just talked about when we talked about earthquakes. So there's going to be a lot of fault lines and truss faults and volcanic fissures and things like that. And you're also going to have rocks folding. Okay, so let's, so that, remember there's five feature, features that you're going to see a lot. You're going to see folds, faults, trenches or subduction zones, volcanoes and earthquakes. Now let's talk about each of these features on each of these types of, of continental of collision boundaries. And there's three types when there's, you have when oceans hit the continents, when oceans hit other oceans, and when continents hit continents, which is not in this slide, we'll see it in the next slide. So here in the convergent boundary between an ocean and a continent, you see that the subducting plate will always be the oceanic plate because it is denser, made of mental-like materials, so since it's newer, it's going to be basalt-like igneous rock made rich in magnesium, while continents will have several different types of composition but it will be more rich in silicon and oxygen it will be lighter than even though it's thicker and it will stay on top now since the oceanic crust is has water in it that will soften up the crust which will make it easier for it to melt creating even more magma and increasing the amount of volcanism that's happening here so you're going to make very very hot magma plumes which will fill magma chambers underneath the continental crust at the top of the continental crust, especially on the area of the continent. Remember, this whole thing is lithosphere, but remember that part of it is the mantle. That only the very, very, very top is actually considered to be lithosphere. And you can actually see something interesting, that the bottom of the continental crust actually has same similar material to the actual oceanic crust. This is where basically the asthenosphere will start. The mantle will start somewhere in between here, on the bottom of the lithosphere, and that, that's what we, that line was going to be called the Moho discontinuity, remember? And you also notice that the top of the continental crust is going to be different. That's going to be the lighter, less dense material. But the bottom of the continental crust, uh, including which includes a piece of the crust and a piece of the mantle, is going to be made of something that's very similar to oceanic lithosphere. And so there's a similarity between those two. And by the way, this line that separates the line that is, that's continental-like material from lines that it is oceanic-like material within the continental crust is called the Canavan discontinuity. All right, and there was a different science to discover that, discover the similarity between the bottom of the continental crust and the actual oceanic crust. Um, regardless, the point is the continental crust will for, have magma plumes forming, and this, this magma not only melts through the crust, but it also takes advantage of cracks in the crust, which form because the crust is bending. So as one plate subducts beneath the other, it causes the other plate to kind of fold because of that. So one plate is subducting, but the other plate is folding, which creates mountains. So you're going to have mountain ranges and island arcs forming whenever these things happen. Sometimes, in fact, you actually have two sets of things. Uh, it starts maybe as an island arc, but as the, as the ground is lifted more and more, the, this island arc that originally this water was covering all the way over here, so it looked like an island arc 
or a mountain range sometimes but so you're going to have islands forming here but sometimes instead of that you get a volcanic mountains forming if, if it's not if it's not the shelf that bends but actually deeper into the land that bends either, either way because of those bends you're going to have fissures in the rock or cracks volcanic which can be used by volcanoes to make it easier for the volcano to rise to the top now, as the, the rock folds more and more, the actual part of that is actually exposed to the magma plume will change. So, look, you notice that there's some dead volcanoes to the sides here in the picture. And those volcanoes are there because at, when the rock was folded differently earlier on, they were on top of the magma plume. But now that the rock has already subducted more and then the continental crust has folded more, you actually cause this, this magma plumes to be dead away from the magma plume. So the magma chamber is no longer active. Either way, one thing that's actually very interesting is that it's going to create these mountains, which because of the fissures are going to be volcanic mountains. And remember, they're fed by the melting plate, which creates magma plumes and filled in those magma chambers. You also have the, the subduction zone with the trench. And it's a trench because it has water involved. Now, in between trench and the continental crust, you have an area where material from the continent is being added to the continent from the oceanic crust. So that means that Let's say, for example, you have things like seamounts or islands in the, in the oceanic crust. As these things hit the continents, they don't necessarily subduct with the continent oceanic plate. Sometimes they get added to the continent and form chain of islands, or basically this is what we call accretion process. It's the process by which the continent pretty much wedges the top of the oceanic crust material into the continent and adds more material to the continent over time because of that, which is then two reasons why the continents have very, very thick crusts, one, because they gather material over thousands of years, and two, because of the bending that they go through as the continental crust has to bend because of the collision that makes this oceanic crust goes underneath, that's going to create a thicker crust because of all that bending and all that accretion that happens. So remember that the continents sometimes wedge off seamounts from the oceanic crust and those that get added to the continent. Another thing that happens is because of all this folding is that sometimes the rock near the edge will crack and form something that we call truss faults. We're going to talk about that in the next chapter. And we also sometimes get truss faults near those mountains or in between those mountains that are cracking. So it's very common to get fault lines because the rock is folding beyond the point that it can take and then it cracks. And those are the things that cause the earthquakes that we talked about. Earthquakes are also common in between the plates in places like this because of the friction and the bending of the rocks on those areas. So you have sh shallow earthquakes because of the truss faults or deep earthquakes because of the collision between the actual two plates. Now you can see the same similar process happening here on the oceanic versus oceanic crust hit. And you can see that what will happen is that the thick, the densest of whatever, whichever one is denser of the two crusts will actually subduct underneath the other. And for example, the oceanic crust here is actually going underneath the other one, and you're going to have all the same features you just saw on the top. You're going to get earthquakes between the plates, you're going to have earthquakes because of truss faults that happen both at the actual edge between the plates and near the folding. In this case, since what you're folding is the actually oceanic floor, you're going to create an island arc because you're going to have ocean on one side and on the other. And in between, you're going to have an island of volcanic mountains. Now, these mountains, since they're protruding above the sea level, they form an island chain. Places like Japan, for example, are caused by this process. Two plates of ocean colliding against each other forces a rising of, of an island chain in between. By the way, this is a good example of what happens in Chile or the Rocky Mountains up here in South and North America as it hits the oceanic plates of the Pacific Ocean. Down here, you're going to see that one side, the side that's going to stay on top, is going to have the back of it is going to be unfolded and it's going to be called the back arc agent. But the, the part in front of it is going to form basically something that looks like a continental shelf. It's not really a continental shelf, but it will look like it. And we call it the four arc basin. And in this area, a lot of sedimentation will gather, both because the ocean is going to be throwing out its, uh, sand in it, into this area for both from the abyssal plane and from wave erosion of the material that's actually rising the, from the seafloor. So these volcanic islands that are rising are going to be eroded by waves and then those waves are going to be throwing the sand and creating a sand bank basically above the four arc basin. And also erosion from rivers and things like that from the volcanic island arc will actually add more sand to this area. And what you think, what you see here is maybe the process of, of the birth of a new continent basically. Because over thousands thousands of years, as more and more material is added to the four arc basin, you're going to make this piece basically 
bigger and bigger, even as it folds larger and larger. And notice that you also have the truss fault at the wedge, and the accretionary wedge is the, that, remember that piece that's going to be picking up things from the oceanic crust that is subducting and adding that to the Fort Arc Basin. Just like it happens in the continental versus, versus ocean collision, we will have it even more often in this these types of collision. This is what we called an ocean versus ocean collision. It looks very similar to what we talked about before on the other one.